Hey guys, so this is going to be USMLE Step 1 Buzzwords Part 3. If you're finding me for the first time, welcome to my channel. I make helpful videos on everything about the path to becoming a physician. Everything from the medical school application process, to doing well in medical school classes, to board prep, and everything in between. So welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, and if you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see, leave me a comment, and I'll definitely consider making a video on that topic. But like I said, this is going to be buzzwords part three, so let's go ahead and get started. The first one is going to be fibrillin 1. And if you see this in the question, any mention of this gene or protein product, you want to be thinking about Marfan syndrome. The next one, fibroblast growth factor receptor 3. If you see this, they're most likely referencing achondroplasia. Flattened T waves, if you see this in a question stem or if you see if you read it on an EKG. You want to be thinking about hypokalemia. That's a really easy one. Foot drop, they like to ask this indirectly in questions all the time. If you ever have a patient with foot drop or a patient who can't dorsiflex, they'll also say that failure to dorsiflex the foot. It's usually pointing towards a common peroneal nerve injury. Fructokinase deficiency, if you see this in a question, you want to be thinking about essential fructosuria. I know there's a couple different types. The one that I've seen come up the most is the essential fructosuria, and you need to know the enzyme deficiency there. It's going to be fructokinase. The next one, galactose 1-phosphate ureteal transferase deficiency. That's a mouthful. If you see this, it's referencing classic galactosemia. Again, there's some other types of galactosemia as well. This is the one that I've seen most commonly, and this on the left side is the enzyme deficiency associated with that. The next one, Gautrin papules. I mentioned these in the high yield images videos. This is in, in reference to dermatomyositis. Guarnieri bodies, if you see uh, this in a question or if you maybe see it on histology, it'll be a bit tougher to pick up on histology, but if they mention it, they're talking about a pox virus infection of some sort. Dix Hallpike maneuver, the osteopathic medical students probably are very familiar with this one. If they reference this, it's used for a patient or something like that. They're talking about benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Next one, haloperidol. Really the only time I've ever seen haloperidol mentioned in, in questions is if they're trying to get you to think of tardive dyskinesia. That's a very, very common side effect with haloperidol use uh, for the purposes of exams. Going along with that, halothane, really the only time I've ever seen this mentioned is when they want you to think about malignant hyperthermia. So halothane will cause malignant hyperthermia in a patient undergoing surgery. They have a poor reaction to, to the anesthesia. These are two things you want to be thinking about. HLA-B8, so the human leukocyte antigens are very high yield for, for step one and level one. There's a lot of different ones. I only included a couple here, but it, it's really important to try to memorize these, get them down pat, because usually this is really the only thing that they'll give you in the question that'll be like a dead giveaway. So it's really easy to get these right and also really easy to get these wrong. So uh, really study these. Be sure that you have them straight in your brain so you can get these questions right real quick. Save some time on test day. So HLA-B8 is going to be the first one, and that is in reference to Graves' disease. HLA-B27, this is a really common one seen in ankylosing spondylitis. Remember, about 95% of patients with ankylosing spondylitis will have HLA-B27 as well. HLA-B51, a little less common, but this is in reference to Bissette syndrome. HLA-CW6, also not very common, but I've seen questions on it as well. This is in reference to psoriasis vulgaris. HLA-DQ1 is pemphigus vulgaris, not the famous psoriasis vulgaris, obviously. HLA-DR3, if you see that in a question, they're most likely talking about Graves' disease, so there's a couple different uh, leukocyte antigens for Graves' disease. HLA-DR4, this one pops up pretty frequently as well, and this is going to be rheumatoid arthritis. And HLA-DR5 will be in reference to Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Like I said, these are very common in questions. There's a, a much bigger, more inclusive chart in first aid, but I just included a couple of the ones that commonly trip students up and that I've seen in questions a lot. Homer Wright rosettes, if you see this in a question, or you might see it on histology as well. The two differentials you want to have on your list are neuroblastoma and medulloblastoma. Howell Jolly bodies, if you see this uh, in a question stem, you want to be thinking about a patient with asplenia. 
Hyper-segmented neutrophils is very common with a vitamin B12 deficiency. So it'll usually be, I believe, it's five or more uh, segments within the neutrophil. Here's a big one, hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribozyl transferase deficiency. That's a mouthful, but if you see that in a question, they're most likely talking about a patient with Lesch 9 syndrome. Um, so a big enzyme deficiency there again, and it's in reference to Lesch 9 syndrome. India Indian ink stain, uh, really the only time that you're going to see this is if they're referencing Cryptococcus neoformans. I also included this in my high yield images videos. You definitely want to look this one up and memorize what it looks like because it's pretty distinct. And once you see it on the test, you'll know that it's Cryptococcus immediately. Iron toxicity, usually if they mention this, they're probably going to want you to know the antidote, which is going to be deferoxamine. There are a couple other ones that have this Fe somewhere in the name. Remember, Fe is iron, obviously. So the most common one is deferoxamine, but there are a couple other ones that have that Fe in the name as well. Janeway lesions, if you see this in a patient, they're most likely pointing to bacterial endocarditis. The lead pipe sign, if you see this on x-ray, uh, of the abdomen of the intestines, it's a loss of hostra in the large intestine and it's pointing to ulcerative colitis. Lead toxicity, if they bring this into a question, uh, you want to know the treatment for that as well and it's going to be succimer. I believe there's one other one that's less common, but for lead toxicity, just no succimer. And the locus cerealis, this is a structure in the brain. Usually if they're talking about this, they want you to know what neurotransmitter is produced there, and that's going to be norepinephrine. And then I believe this is the last one, McBurney's point, very important to know for the exam and for life in general, is going to be pointing toward appendicitis. So know what McBurney's point is, what McBurney's sign is, and uh, that's usually a dead giveaway on the exam day. So that's the end of this video. One thing that I do want to point out is for a lot of these buzzwords it's not just enough to know the buzzword you need to know what it looks like on histology you'll need to know how they describe it without using these bu buzzwords obviously if you see these buzzwords on test day then it is probably going to point you in the right direction but obviously the test is never that straightforward they'll give you a picture or they'll word it in a strange way and you kind of have to figure it out from context clues so make sure that you're not only memorizing these buzzwords but that you're also looking up the histology pictures and those kinds of things Go back to the high yield images videos if you need to, um, to supplement that and make sure that you're not just memorizing these words, but also understanding what they're associated with and why. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe, leave me a like, leave me a comment on this video, and good luck studying.